afternoon, everyone. As my introduction said, my name is Sasha Bell. I'm an associate clinical psychologist at the Michael Care Center. And today we'll be talking about coping in a pandemic, managing COVID-19 fatigue and stress. Now, the reason that I chose to do this topic is from, actually came about from my experiences at working as well as my interactions with my friends and family and so on. So in speaking to children, their parents, uh, my colleagues, I realized that there was a need to cover this topic because the pandemic is ongoing and we are trying our best to get through it. All right, so in this session, we're going to explore COVID-19 fatigue discuss some signs of COVID burnout. So I'll be using burnout and fatigue interchangeably at different times. Um, I'll also be using expressions like pandemic burnout or pandemic fatigue. We're also going to identify some coping mechanisms and examine the connection between COVID-19 fatigue and stress, which I think it's self-explanatory, but it's worth connecting for the purpose of the next section, which is to outline general techniques for stress, stress management. All right, now COVID-19 pandemic has impacted us significantly in different ways. You'll see effects in education, the change to remote learning and the challenges associated with it. And not only that, we find that there have been schools who have opened up during this time and had to close down because of COVID. sudden changes in routine when it comes to teaching as well as students learning in the classroom. Work and income. We've seen impacts on job loss, reduced pay opportunities for business, job opportunities as well, as well as how work is conducted. So some persons may have tran um, transitioned from work from home, some may have partial work from home, and there have been different time periods where sometimes it was always work from home or never work from home. And some persons have maintained their going face-to-face -to, -face to work every day. Now, health-wise, now this might be the most, I guess, obvious one. We have been impacted, our physical and mental health has been impacted. There has been increased fear and worry related to contracting the virus as well as the potential side effects and of possibly dying as well. And then for our parents out there, we have to think about our students or your children, really. I say everyone is students because of my background and my need to and my working with children here at the center. A lot of persons are also experiencing grief and bereavement because we have lost a lot of persons from this pandemic. Um, and we are still losing all the people even as we go along. Uh, relationships might have, relationship issues might have come up because of, you know, being at home more, being around each other more, maybe more issues have come about. And we've seen changes in someone in person's emotional state because we've been existing in a general state of uncertainty because we are not sure when this pandemic will be over. Um, you know, we're always dealing with changes in curfew times and lockdown periods and, you know, even hours of operations for businesses. All right. So those were some, you know, effects of COVID-19. Now, if we look at this chart, we'll see that COVID-19 fatigue is a center of this chart because it leads to increased emotional and physical exhaustion, increased helplessness, lower resilience, and less motivation to follow protocols. And then it kind of, it kind of cycles into more fatigue and increasing numbers of this once you're in this kind of cycle. All right, so what exactly is COVID-19 fatigue? 
So this might be the exhaustion you may be feeling over just over just over a year of spending extra time and energy dealing with this new pandemic lifestyle, along with all the associated struggles, some of which I mentioned before. Now, the associated struggles are the adversities and challenges that people and families were facing before the pandemic, along with new challenges. Many persons have said that whatever their situation was before, the challenges they had before, they're now worse because of COVID. So what are some signs of COVID-19 burnout? So you might find that you, maybe late last year, I believe that's when we started maybe feeling some effects. Six months in, about six months into the pandemic, we started maybe not wanting to take the recommended precautions such as proper mask wearing, social distancing and sanitization. Now, the farther we've gone along with the pandemic, is the more emotional, we have more emotional reactions occurring. So some persons might become more angry or become angry when COVID-19 is mentioned. You can't speak about COVID-19. If you're talking about something and even though it might be connected to the scenario, you bring it up and persons get very upset about that. Then there's increased frustration that you are limited in how and when you interact with persons, conduct business and run errands and other stuff. So for example, if you're on the road and you saw someone you haven't seen in a long time, you're not able to hug them like you would want to, or running errands might take longer because you have to stand up outside in a long line. And when I think about this, I do think of the tax office, um, which is very inconvenient for everyone and maybe adds to the fears of being around more people in a space. But you'd have to do some reflection because it's important to know what you were doing before and what you're doing now. So if you feel, if you had, if you had the routine of coming home and spraying down yourself with rubbing alcohol before going into the house, then you would, may not be doing it anymore. You may not wash your hands for as long as you used to. They're just habits that you can't be bothered with anymore. All right, so now I would like to ask persons to share how you have been experiencing, have you been experiencing COVID-19 fatigue and how? So let's start with one person. Could someone volunteer to speak? All right, don't everyone rush at once. And if you don't want to speak, please put your comments in the chat. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, so um, for me, it, I didn't realize initially that it was affecting me. I just found myself one day commenting on Facebook that I, I think I am depressed. And a friend of mine, are you hearing me clearly? Yes, I'm hearing you. Right, and a friend of mine indicated that if you think you are, perhaps you are. And I reflected on it. And as you have said, I realized that sometimes I would get so upset because I'm, I'm a Christian. So it, it affected how we interacted with the older persons, for example. And so I was really stressed over the fact that they couldn't come out. We had so many restrictions to go and see them and all of that. But for me, it has lingered because I have a child who is at grade 11. Okay. And Yes, and it's really, really, really um, stressful. I've been telling other persons that I am hanging by this a little string of my faith because like, whenever I think of his, even talking to you now, I find myself cracking up a little. Like, when I think of his future, I'm like, is this it? Because he's really not coping with the virtual environment. And I'm thinking, here was this child who was doing so well before, What's going to become of him? We're still hopeful and we're trying to push. But it's really, when I saw the notice coming for this meeting, I grabbed the opportunity right away because it really has been very daunting for me. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I just want to say we're happy to have you here because this is exactly why I wanted to do something like this. 
so that we could discuss techniques, which we'll be doing next. Um, does anyone else want to share? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I have been listening and um, from what I understood, it seems you are talking about those persons who are affected just in that way, but I'm, I'm speaking because I, I actually am now recovering from COVID, actually getting the, 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 the disease itself, the sickness itself. And well, um, I realized that it has done so much. Um, right now, I, I, I've never been a fearful person never what was just basically fearless quote unquote um nothing seemed to phase me when it came to fear but I, I realize I'm so fearful now um I keep if I don't hear my children for a while I keep going to check on them because my whole family had COVID my husband went to the hospital and um was admitted for days and we were here sick and I think it, it, it also affected me mentally where mm -hmm. I actually took my children out in the night, in the cold, saying I'm running from someone and all of those things. So it really has affected me. And no, I am uh, so fearful. I, I, I had to go to get that letter to say that um, my quarantine is over and um, I can now proceed with my daily routine and I was in the car going to pick up the letter and I was just so fearful I saw the vehicles coming and I was so fearful that's what it has done to me and then it has really been messing with my sleep routine I can't seem to sleep I'm taking some medication that was given to me by the doctor and I take them and they just make me feel so sick and so tired and listless like I can't manage so I'm, I'm suffering from all of those. I'm, I'm anxious to go back to work. I realize I can't go back because, and then sometimes I will not remember things. So all of these things, and it's really making me agitated. And sometimes, you know, I will, I will think about it. Okay, Mrs. Allen, thank you very much for sharing. Um, I'm very sorry that you went through that with, are going through it with COVID. I'm glad that you recovered and that your family is doing better as well. Um, a part of this presentation, well, I should say, I have a list, I've compiled a list of resources for mental health services that persons can use because I realized that even though I'll be giving you tips and so on, sometimes persons need additional help and you shouldn't be afraid to seek help from other persons. All right, I'm going to read a response that I see in the chat. Um, this person, it's very stressful as an educator and as a parent. Sometimes I feel so depressed having to do online classes and sometimes limited participation from students and negative responses from teachers. And then trying to support daughter and a son in grade 10 have to be teaching some tricks, some topics. All right, I'm glad this, um, this person, thank you, Ms. Osborne for sharing that in the chat. Um, you know, as, as parents and as teachers, we persons are living in multiple roles. You have to live for yourself. You are, you are a person. You're a parent, you might even be a teacher, but you have so many roles to fulfill. And again, this just emphasizes why it's so important to have a session like this so we can share how we are feeling so that we can figure out ways of helping ourselves and finding our ways to help ourselves by using a referral or so. Can I have one more person share? All right. Hey, good. Okay, um, hi. Yes, I'm a school counselor. And within the first weeks, two weeks of COVID, 
I kind of snapped into it that, okay, you're going to have to make a plan for how you're going to reach students, how you're going to do your job in COVID. And I um, got working, was energized, motivated, you know, just wanting to make this work and doing whatever I needed to do to get other persons on my team, other teachers to get them motivated. And I was running with a lot of steam and um, making headway until about January of this year is when I think the COVID fatigue hit. Yes. I was tired of all the protocols, all the, mm. basically you have to make a plan just to go to the supermarket. So that was getting overwhelming, constantly having to reach out to students, getting students online, losing them, having to start over again because they have new issues, the, the tablet breaks, they, they lose internet, the parents lose their job, parents started dying, um, teachers getting sick, all kinds of things. And I felt like I was just running out of steam come January. I didn't want to go back to school after the, the Christmas break. And I have kids, I think a positive is that my son who is school age seems to do better online. Yes. So he- It does happen. Right. So that was a good thing. And that's a positive. Um, we spend more time as a family. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, he is an educator. So he has certain stresses related to his job that are COVID. Um, related. <laughs> right. So, you know, we've had more time as a family, but we've had more stress as a family as well. I have parents who are older trying to keep them inside and that's sort the of thing. So, you know, and I, I, being online for work and being more accessible to persons, people feel more free to contact you. So I'm getting the calls and I'm getting the text messages at 11 o'clock at night, parents calling mm. eight o'clock at night. So it's almost like you're never off. So I was really getting burned out by that. Um, I think I'm- Understandably too. Right, so I'm coming over the hill now. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you're coming over the hill. Um, for the future, establishing some boundaries would be try to establish boundaries at least. Yes. Um, the thing with this is that we can always, you might look back and say, I should have done this earlier, I should have done this before. But really and truly, the only thing to do at this point is to look forward and to try to make things better for yourself and your family going forward. Um, Thank you very much for sharing that. I'm glad that you raised the point that you have more time together as a family. More time together doesn't always mean a bad thing. Um, it can also be a good thing. Not saying that the pandemic is good, but in dealing with the pandemic, one of the things that we should always do is try to find the positive in the situations to kind of keep us. All right, one more person from the chat says, I feel overwhelmed with the task of learning how to teach using technology and not being able to help my child as I am teaching. I know that teachers who are parents are, are, are struggling right now because how do you be both persons at the same time and make sure your child is taken care of as well as all of your students? And it is indeed a very challenging time for persons like that. All right, so we're going to continue. So now I have some coping mechanisms for COVID-19 fatigue. All right, adding structure to your day. As human beings, we do like having some sort of structure, some of us, most of us. But having some sort of structure helps us. It helps us know what we're going to be doing day by day. But with COVID-19, whatever sort of structure you thought you had before, you do not have it anymore. You may not have it anymore. So what you have to do is try to establish daily routines. And for you parents out there, trying to incorporate your children's schedule, like online school, after, after school work, sleep and playtime. I used to call it homework, but it's now after school work because home and work are more or less the same thing once you're a student and once you're a teacher. 
and some parents out there as well are working at home. So why, why add structure? It helps to take control of an, unpredict an unpredictable situation, which is this entire pandemic. Now, in trying to take control of an unpredictable situation, it, it helps us to stay grounded in what we can control and what we can't control. Because I think something important to do is to not focus on the things that you are out of your control. Just do the best you can for you and your situation. But you also have to be flexible and adjust accordingly if changes have to be made. And a part of controlling an unpredictable situation is knowing that things are likely to change from day to day or something sudden could happen or there could be an emergency. All right, reminding yourself why. So you're not wearing your mask as much anymore or you're not willing to, you're not sanitizing as much. Think about why you should try, uh, why it is important to try and follow protocols. If you have children, think about their health, think about you're doing it for them and your health as well. So if you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your family, these are just the things you have to do. So you have to try and remind yourself why. And you use that as a push to keep on keeping on. Just keep handling this pandemic day by day. And then now as parents, when you have children, you have to realize you're also setting an example for them. And it's good for them to have these, good, these habits. Because at some point, and it, it actually has already happened already. Some students did not immediately leave school when schools were closed, depending on what school you went to. Um, some schools were allowed to reopen. And for that reason, children should be aware of proper practices when they're going out in public and when they're going back into school because you're not always going to be around for those situations. Um, so for children, you could use games, videos, stories, and role play to promote understanding and repeat often and do this consistently. If you're having a child, if you have a child who is younger or would need more help with understanding why and developing a habit like this. All right. So recreating habits and routines to follow COVID-19 protocols or just creating habits. So you have to practice again. Practice is repetition, which means it becomes more automatic and you're less likely to resist doing it. So if you do something automatically, it's harder for a thought to come into your head, I don't feel like doing this, but you just did automatically, so it's already done. So once it becomes automatic, it should be easier to do. And then eventually it should become a habit. And then again, for you parents out there, make it fun for your children with the use of games and a reward system. My, I think I have a friend who got her three-year-old to wear his mask. It took time and a reward system, but it happened. And I was happy when I saw the post about it and impressed because a three-year-old, you know, that's, that's impressive. And remember these rewards and games and the things that you do for your children when you want to reinforce good behavior, keep them within your resources and don't make it something that you can't replicate on a regular basis. So don't promise $500 every time you want to take your child out if they wear the mask because that can add up very quickly, all right? And that was just an extreme example. No, I don't know anyone who did that. All right, so the next point, identify your triggers. So pay attention, pay special attention to the things that upset you, whether it's the concerns about healthcare or missing church or sporting events or going to the gym or even having regular fun days. So once you're aware, you then try to minimize these triggers where possible. So, so one way of doing that is to 
Maybe you avoid limiting your news intake and following the daily report of COVID numbers. I have a friend who doesn't listen to a certain type of music anymore because it reminds her of going out and it makes her too sad. So she avoids doing that right now to help her cope until you know it's safe for her to do that. So with children, in addition to identifying your triggers, help your child figure out what theirs are. So monitor their behavior, have conversations about emotions, be patient and validate their feelings. They're not wrong to feel fearful or anxious or scared or unhappy about the situation. And some children who may have difficulty with expression use pictures and drawings. And do this side by side and do it constantly so you can keep checking in with your child. All right, accept and plan ahead. So accept that COVID-19 will be around for a time. I wanted to say a long time. I wanted to say for a time period, but I am honestly not sure at this moment. There is this uncertainty about how long, how exactly long this will be around. So what I do or what I recommend persons do is to stay in the present, take it day by day, moment by moment. And be prepared for sudden, be prepared to expect sudden changes in routine, make a contingency plan for things that are likely to change and monitor your health. And if you can try to have medicine on hand. And this is not written here, but having a family emergency plan would also be a good idea should something happen very suddenly. Because from everything we know about COVID-19, it can happen very suddenly. Symptoms can take a drastic turn. So it would be, good and it would be a good idea to kind of have a plan as to what to do in that situation and share it with your family members or your household members or the persons who are in your bubble. All right, so let's look at this chart again. When I look at this chart, I see a lot of things that are stressful. Feeling in more helplessness, lower resilience, increased emotional and physical exhaustion, and less motivation to follow protocols, or just less, less motivation in general. So COVID-19 is a stressful time and will continue to be a stressful time for all of us. So now we can talk about stress, stressors and stress. So stressors are the events or conditions in your surroundings that may trigger stress. They are experienced as perceived threats to one's well-being. Now stress is how our bodies respond to the perceived threats or demands. So our body's defense is going to high gear resulting in fight or flight reaction or, or the stress response, which is your body's way of protecting you. So you have the threat and the threat here, I could say COVID-19 is the threat. It is a constant threat that we've been dealing with for over a year. And with COVID-19, all the other stresses and challenges that we are dealing with are threats. So when we have a threat, stress hormones are released and which signals danger. And then we have a stress response. So constant exposure to challenges means you will always exist in a heightened state of stress. There is also a decrease in tolerance for stress. So you might find that something that never upset you before may upset you now. You may find that you, you were never someone who got very angry before, but you're, find you're, you're getting yourself getting angry or easily. And this can have a significant impact on health and well-being because mind and body connected. If, you are, if your emotional state is poor, it can affect your immune system, but we're going to get into that. But the most important thing right now is to be able to recognize when you're stressed so that you're able to do something about it. So let's have another discussion. How do you know when you are stressed?
Any volunteers? Okay, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, when I'm stressed, you will feel that your whole body system starts shutting down, not responding, especially your sinus start acting up. Everything around you seems to be bothering you at the time. So you're vulnerable to anything that is happening. Flu, headaches, all those symptoms. Body aches, all those things. Yes. All right, thank you for sharing. In the chat, Camille says her body tightens, especially shoulders and neck. Karen, Karen Rattray, neck pains and pain travels up to the head. Anybody else want to share? All right, me again. No problem. I yeah, like hearing cool. from everyone today. All right, so I tend to um, get really miserable and I start fussing and I don't, I don't hiss like ordinarily. And I start mm -hmm. hissing and I just, everything bothers me. And then I realize, nah, something, something else as you go in and then I start reacting that way. Okay, thanks for sharing, Harris. Does anyone find that their stressful reactions have changed since COVID? Or become worse or more extreme, I should say? Yes, I should say that because of work, we mm -hmm. are overwhelmed and stress is a strict trigger for asthma and I'm asthmatic so mm -hmm. I have more asthmatic attack yes than more than ever and that can be that can be dangerous yes it is so I when I think it's getting overwhelming I just stop take a deep breath mm -hmm. put away all that is to be done or ask someone else to do it in the meantime. Okay, that's good. So it sounds like you are figuring out ways of managing your stress and that you've identified what stresses you out and you know what to do when it happens. Anyone else? I think, um, afternoon, I think that afternoon. sometimes we put extra pressure on ourselves when we see how we're reacting and we need to remind ourselves that we're human and this is not business as usual so our reaction will not be business as usual so after we've had that outburst because i tend to get like really um i think i'm my most critical person i will right. go back and look over how i responded with the children what did i say what did i write in a text and i would say oh that was a bit too harsh but in analyzing, I think we also need to cut ourselves some slack and just remind ourselves, listen, we are alive. <laughs> we are yes. coping as best as we can because this is new normal. So we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves. And just realizing that will help to lessen the stress because being hard on yourself is going to only increase it. Very true. Oh, Thank and you have for chocolate handy. Have Sorry? really chocolate. Have chocolate handy. Well, that's a fun one, <laughs> but you know, not, we have to balance that. It's very tempting to, to snack more, to reach for chocolate because I, I would, I would know as a chocolate lover, but I really tried and persons will say it. you know, try not to turn to food in this time. It's not always possible, but that's why I say balance. 
So don't let that be your go-to. Can I tell you how I do it though? You see the same way sure. that you would take a one a day. So I would have like a bar of Cadbury and it will last me an entire week or more. So I literally, if I do it, it's just like, I'm taking a little, one little, yes, bite, one little square. Yes. And I'm like, okay. this is just it. Put it back down. Cause you need that emergency supply. <laughs> so, right. Well, I can't have that emergency supply around me. So I'm glad you can. I know there are persons who can, I'm not one of those. So that goes back to balance again. It's not going extreme. It's about balance and keeping things under control, right? All right, anyone else? Actually, let me take a look in the chat. All right, so let's talk about some stress reactions I'm seeing in the chat from YouTube. Participant Pat Ryan. Um, it says, my body breaks down and I keep feeling sick. I also snap like a time bomb. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Pat Ryan. Um, let me look for more. Heart racing extremely fast. Cannot sleep. That's from Nicole. And then a positive one here is that Spento is able to manage stress more because of med meditation and analysis on your life and everything that is going on. Persons like Stephanie reported more being more irritable and being more bothered by things and being less tolerant. Alison mentioned being less patient with her son during online schooling. Opal mentioned not being able to sleep. And there's another one, and everything bothers you. This is from Mrs. Rose Reynolds. All right, so that's how everyone, has, thank you for sharing everyone. Um, now you have basically, I'm glad to get these personal accounts from you. So the next part of the presentation is to actually just continue along the signs of being stressed. And there are a lot of them have been mentioned. So we have the physical signs. It was mentioned increasing heart rate, there's sweating, body aches, like your head might hurt, your back might hurt, um, your stomach might feel strange, you might feel nauseous, um, skin conditions like eczema or acne, and having a weaker immune system, which it's an important one to address because right now and going forward you always want to have a good immune system yes but during covid especially one of the things that we can do for ourselves in addition to you know following protocols and so on is to try and keep our health intact as much as possible and keep our immune system as strong as it can be so emotional components include feeling sad and angry being easily agitated, frustrated, or irritated, and that was mentioned by quite a few persons today, crying more, and having a loss of interest in engaging in daily or fun activities. And then there are others. You might find that you eat more or sleep less or sleep more. So just changes in sleeping and eating habits. Or sometimes you go to sleep and you wake up or you keep waking up so you don't have a good restful sleep because you keep waking up. Sometimes you have racing thoughts. You might be an overthinker and you just think about things and ruminate on them and that then it becomes problematic. Forgetfulness and disorganization are also other side effects of being stressed. Where you can't seem to focus as well. You might forget an appointment that you would normally be able to remember and being disorganized. Let me just peek in the chat. All right, uh, let me scroll up. I see something. And in this time, Camille mentioned giving more, being more, having more gratitude, changing priorities. Because I think with being home from from this COVID experience, 
there has been a lot more time for reflection on your life before it happened. And maybe it gave you some insights as to how things can be better. So having more gratitude and having different priorities than you had before. All right, so stress management techniques. Connecting with friends and family. That loneliness and isolation I mentioned from before, this is where you try to take the time to connect with friends and family. There's video chats, WhatsApp calls, or calling on other platforms that are free. Um, actual phone calls would work as well. Um, checking in with your friends and family from time to time. Sometimes it takes your mind off of what's going on right now. Um, try to engage in good eating and sleeping habits. Choosing, choose when, who, and what to give your energy to. Because if you're, ex if you're giving energy to every single negative thing, that means eventually you're going to run out of energy and that will leave you feeling drained and you're not be able to have the energy you need for other things. Practice the art of being grateful. I know it's a challenging time. I know that there's been a lot of loss. There has been a lot of challenges, a lot of anxiety, but try and practice acknowledging what's good, what has been good or what is going good or something positive that happens during this time. You can repeat or write down a positive mantra or thought to yourself on a daily basis. Some persons might try it now to embrace or before continue to embrace your spiritual or religious side. It might mean reading the daily bread, using Bible scriptures, or just positive sayings. And when we're being hit with negative news on a daily basis, Sometimes we need to seek out positive stories in, your, in the community, in our country, and in the wider world. Because we need to know that there, are, there is still good out there. <laughs> um, and that's what we can focus on. When I was working on this presentation, the part where I described the impact of COVID-19 challenges, you know, with education, income, all of those, I actually had a moment where I had to stop that part and move on to something else because I realized in thinking about all the potential effects and how people are being affected, it was overwhelming at the time and I had to take, out, I had to take some time away from it. And I actually ended up calling a friend because I said, why not do something positive now that I'm feeling kind of stressed out or anxious or worried about persons. And that's what we have to do sometimes, stepping away. So we may also have to avoid the news to some extent, or to a lot of extent. Um, persons, I know there are persons who are checking the daily numbers. While it's good to be aware, if you find that you're feeling overwhelmed every time you check, maybe it's time to not check as much. It is good to be aware, but if it's affecting you too much, then limit how often you check. Just keep doing things that you can do to keep yourself and your family, your children and your household safe and the persons you care about. Other stress management techniques, Avoiding or walking away from st stressful situations. This may also include people. Um, engaging in relaxation techniques. Deep breathing, stretching, visualization, and counting to 10. Now, the thing with deep breathing, in order to be effective with it, you have to block out what else is going on. Because if you're breathing deeply and you're thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch, what, what's the next thing on your list, then you're not properly engaging in it. To engage in deep breathing properly, you focus on the feeling of breathing in and having it, well, for example, breathing in, having the air fill your stomach 
and then releasing it. So you focus on that, the breath in and out, and it should help to calm you down. But remember, you have to block out stuff. If you're not used to blocking out things, start practicing. For visualization, visualize yourself more relaxed and you'd be surprised at what can happen. A lot of us actually hold stress in our bodies. So relaxing is relaxed, having a relaxed body, relaxed body, relaxed mind. So if you can get your body to relax, it should help your mind to relax. But it also means being aware of where you hold your stress. All right, so where do persons hold their stress? How do you know when you're stressed based off of what part of your body are being tense? I will start, mine is my shoulders and neck. Anybody else? Same for me. Have you been able to pick up the difference in how stressed shoulders feel versus relaxed? Or anything that's stressed before? Yeah, when, when I'm stressed, I, I have a pain in my neck and my mm -hmm. shoulders are just painful and stiff. But, but, but when, I'm, when I'm okay, there's, there's no pain in my neck and my shoulders are right. okay. Okay, thank you. And sometimes, well, I actually didn't realize this until maybe recently, fairly recently that um, for example, if I'm tense, I didn't realize a thing about my neck or my shoulders until I started reading up about these techniques and pictured myself or it being in a stressful situation, I'm realizing I need to relax. So right now I'm relaxed, but when I'm tense, this is my shoulders like this. Um, does anybody else have the experience of not realizing for, a, even though we are all adults, but for a long time that we've been stressed out and not realize it just from simple body movements or how our bodies feel? Actually, let me look in the chat. So one person said, and this is very important, recognize the things that we have control over and in the same breath, the things that we do not have control over. Thank you, Mrs. Grant, for that. Because if you can't control it, what are you going to do about it? You can't do anything about it. So you just focus on things that you can control. Another stress management technique is using humor to relax. Now, I endorse this just for example, if you have to do something that is stressful, you do it or you avoid it. And then you go and maybe watch something that's funny or read a joke or something like that. For persons in this pandemic, I've recognized that um, persons have started nicknaming things that are associated with this pandemic. So I've seen what persons are calling it a pizza or a panini. When is this panini going to be over? Or just substituting any word that begins with P and is probably food related because a lot of them are food related for humor. Support and not to overdo, overdo it because, you know, this is still a difficult time for many persons and you never know what someone is going through, but for your own self, Maybe having a nickname for this pandemic for you and your kids would be a good would be good would be something good to do. Um, persons nickname getting the vaccines as well, and that was yeah that was something. So it kind of helps to lighten the mood when you get something a nickname. So. Um, that's always important. Let's see what's going on in the chats. All right, so someone mentioned that for their stress, 
Nicole Dillon, Dillon, sorry, from YouTube. I feel pain in my neck and I consume a lot of sugary products. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Nicole Dillon. All right. So sometimes in order to, to use our stress, stress management techniques, we need to engage in reflection to establish how you are feeling. So, and Alpha also realized that lots of persons are stressed out just because they're not aware or don't have all the information or they're confused about COVID-19, what it does, how you get it, um, what the vaccine will do when you get it and things like that. So this is when, this is when you seek information from a credible source if you're confused about COVID-19. And one of the most important things I can say about stress management is that you should not be afraid to ask for help or to seek advice. There is nothing silly about this pandemic. It's, it's, it's been a very significant event and it's serious. So do not be afraid to ask for help or seek advice. All right, does anyone have any questions? Oh, before I go into that, a handout will be sent to persons who registered on Zoom that will cover resources. As I mentioned earlier, um, mental health, for ways to take care of your mental health or services that can be accessed, along with a stress quiz. Could anyone actually do a comparison for me? How did you feel before you started and how do you feel now? So from zero to 10, one being the least stressed and 10 being very stressed, did anyone observe a change or how do you feel now? Persons are also free to ask questions at this time. Yeah, this catch up our surprise. The Sims? Anyone else? Or yes? Any questions? Or comments, maybe? All right. Okay, yes, there is a question. Hello. Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. Um, there, is there a link for the registration or once we have registered, that's okay? Once you've registered, it's okay. Just ensure that you got, you are getting the emails before, then you should be able to get these resources I'm going to email. Or we're yes, going to we email got out. the email. Even the reminder okay. up to know. Okay. okay, so you should be able to get those resources then. All right, then. Thanks much. All right. And the last thing right. I need to mention, yes. Go on. I, well, I am grateful for this workshop and I am grateful for some of the tidbits or resources that you have placed <laughs> where we can acknowledge who we are and how we go about doing it. All right, thank you for sharing that. And I'm happy that you were able to participate in today's session. All right, from the chat. I'm seeing that persons are closer to, I'm seeing a seven. First, persons are feeling more hopeful. That's Nadine Reynolds Smith. Um, seven from Karen, eight from Ro, six from Marsha Lee. All right, does anyone else have any questions or something they want to share? And there's seven from Celia Gale Smith. We have an in-between with a five. An eight from Karen. Six. 
seven from Anika Walker. All right. So I don't hear anyone else jumping up to speak right now. So I think this means that we are coming, we are at the end of this session. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, it was an enjoyable session for me because this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I've got, I'm glad that I've gotten the chance mm -hmm. to speak to persons. Oh, actually we have a question here. All right. All right, share some tips on how to be less stressed about being appraised. All right, well, this is one of those situations. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, my weekend is gonna be very rough enough. Okay, sorry, we got some interruption. Um, I was saying that about being appraised, remember you stick to things that are in your control and things that you cannot control. So it doesn't make sense to worry about the appraisal because at the end of the day, it's, it's dependent on other persons. So you try and focus on anything that you can do that might make this appraisal better. Remember to practice relaxation techniques, deep breathing. Um, Screen, come up back. It does come up back. I'll have to find out about the certificate for participation. And you're welcome, Celia, Celia, Celia Gill, yes, you're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? I'm sorry, I was having a little trouble with my screen. Something went wrong, the, the screen stopped moving, the microphone was open and I couldn't do anything about it. I'm sorry about one that. One of those, one of these technology things. I'm just right. grateful that we've gotten through this part, but yes, carry on. Right, and I was distracted because I was in another workshop which started from 8.30 this morning. <laughs> but I pick up a little bit from what was shared. I sent something in the chat. Right, this is Herma Rose Reynolds. Yes. So um, I'll try my best to relax, but it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, when your attention is pulled from all angles, it is a hard one to deal with. But as you said earlier, you know, we have to find a way to cope, ask for help, and um, we'll get through it. <laughs> we'll get through it yes. eventually. <laughs> I believe yeah. we will. Um, and even taking a minute, I would say five minutes, if you can find five minutes, when you're being hit with information from all angles, step away from everything. It might mean physically stepping away from everything, depending on what your situation is, and going by yourself. Right. And Another again, thing the relaxation that techniques, that deep breathing, focusing on how it feels. Right. Focusing on what a relaxed body feels like. So make sure you're not tensing up. Those are right. the simple things that you can do for yourself. It right. may not solve the immediate issue, but at least it will give you a little bit of relief. And maybe it will even make you be able to solve whatever issue is going on. Yes. In a better, more effective way because you have a clearer head. Right. right. I'm not sure if anyone shared this early and I didn't hear, but one thing that helps me, uh, I understand that at this time, we ought to increase on our vitamins, everything that can build your immune system. So mm -hmm. I, got some, I got something from my doctor, which I must continually fill. It's a refill um, prescription, a, month, a monthly supply. So each time it's going down, I have to refill and he said, this will build my immune system. So if others are not doing that, they can try that as well. Yes, I agree with that. I think that follow, well, following the protocols and building your immune system, there is, you can't go wrong with, you know, making yourself feel healthier or be stronger. Once you're doing everything that is recommended 
you know, bad doctors already or just health professionals has to wear the mask and engaging in all those health protocols. All right, um, TM Hill mentions that the best thing we can all do now is pray, be hopeful, and if we don't have a relationship with the Lord, now is the time to do so. He will see us through. And I do encourage persons to explore their spiritual and religious side. This could be a good time for that. If you don't, if you don't have that side of you right now, then maybe this is a good time to explore that. But I mean, it's really up to, it's a very individual and personal choice, but the option is always there. All right, um, the, the recording for this Zoom session should be available on our YouTube page. And plus the resources will be sent out. And someone, all right, Celia Gale mentions I should share the information. I'm glad this was said because this is actually something I want persons to do. If you find that you know someone who might need additional help, then hopefully my resources will be, or the resources I provided will be able to help you help someone else because we are all in this together. We all have different, you know, lives and challenges and so on, but we are all in this together in some way. So we really can't go wrong with trying to help each other. All right, well, I think this is the end now. I've said it before, but um, I think this is the end now. Thanks again, everyone for participating. And remember that this will be on our YouTube page, the recording for this. Um, or oh, as another resource that is on our website, we did newsletters for parents and for teachers last year, and they can be accessed on our microcare websites. And those are just additional resources, but that will be in the resource page I'll be sending out as well. All right, thank you everyone. Take care, stay safe, be hopeful, and stay positive. All right, thank you.